Well, we, we've come a tremendous ways. It's so funny because we focused on running to the ball full speed all week long without breaking down. I didn't want them to chop their feet breaking down. I wanted them to run through the opponent. And we worked on that all during the week. We stopped practice a couple of times and let's start it over. Let's do it over. And the uh, young men, they, they, they got it. They got it. We showed a couple of clips last night of the first play from the twos and then the first play from the ones. And I said, which ones are the ones and twos? It looks like the twos were the ones, so the ones got to step it up. And they did today. They came out tonight. Proud of them. Coach, probably Malik Shamir is my line sports, the final word. Congratulations on your victory today. Mm -hmm. um, when you took over the job two years ago, did you ever envision it would be like today? Because yep. what you've done to this program, the community, and not only on that, but nationally, you just recreated just an invigorance with Colorado football, and we thank you for that, Coach. Thank you. I think we did. It's not just me. These young men played a, a wonderful role in that as well. Everybody in the program played their part. They did their thing, and I'm, I'm thankful, and I'm actually proud of where we are. Did I envision this? Yes because I think about winning. I never think about losing. I never think about being on the bottom of nothing. So I think about being triumphant and, and, and doing the doggone thing and then talking about it, uh, talking about it profoundly, you know. So I'm happy with, with where we are. Um, I think we could be better, yeah. and we're going to figure that out, and we're going to improve in area, every area, not just the areas on the field. The coaching staff, the support staff, training staff, the, the, the weight room, the strength and conditioning staff, we're going to improve in every area because we're going to make those traffic changes. Hold on, hold on. I know you said this is the last one. Uh, where's my man? My man. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We got two more. Two more. Come on. No, no, dog. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Do what you do. Jack Carlo. Jack Carlo, my man. Good way to Isaiah Harch, you mentioned two-way players in yeah. the game. How excited are you for the future? This, this kid is unbelievable, man. I got a nickname for him. He has to tell you what it is. But this kid here works hard every day, makes great grades, never late. Um, you don't have to call him twice for nothing. Remembers his assignments. He has assignments offensively, defensively, as well as special teams. And he don't miss. You know, we put a package in, in for, for him to be a running back. I think he he got nine yards or eight yards or two carries, a couple of carries. He, he, he's phenomenal, and he's always smiling, man. He loves the game, and those are the kind of young men we like to recruit. Those are the kind of young men that we adore, truly. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I truly appreciate you guys coming back to the channel. I appreciate you guys hitting the like, the notification bell, leaving great comments. Leave vulgar language comments. We're gonna jump break bread with Coach Prime post game press conference. Hey guys, let's get the likes up to ten. Let's get the subscribers up to ten. Let's get the uh, comments up to ten. Thank you. I, I, I love my stats. I'm sorry. <laughs> There we go. Um, first and foremost, happy bless um, Thanksgiving to all that I didn't get a chance to say that too. Thanksgiving is not just about turkey and dressing and all of that, it's just about being thankful for what we are, who we are and how we are. We're, none of us are who we want to be, but we're showing what we used to be. True. Uh, we are. Uh, uh, work in session right now. God is not through with any of us. Thank God. But we on our way and we're heading in the right direction. Now, let me transition to this team headed in the right direction. That was a phenomenal finish defensively that's indicative of who we are and how we play the game of football. Um, both coordinators, man, Rob and Pat, man, my God, these guys are so darn good. I know you guys question a multitude of things uh, from them, but they're so good and they've been so consistent through the year. Uh, yeah, they've exceeded all expectations. We've exceeded all expectations. And I'm really happy where we are. We, we certainly wanted to take that one extra step last week and we fell short, but 
Look how we rebounded. Look, look how we wiped our tears and got back up, got on the horse and yelled giddy up. And I'm proud of uh, our young man, God, we had to know. And I want you to really blow this up. We had three young men today, Travis Hunter, uh, Rock, uh, Isaiah Harge, Rock is uh, Brown, and Isaiah Harge. Three guys play both ways today. How many times have you seen that in college football? So that is phenomenal. And uh, Harge did his doggone thing on special teams as well, which is phenomenal. I think Travis Clinch, the Heisman. Um, thank you, God, for stopping me. Because I almost said something. I think Travis Clinch, the Heisman, with his performance, um, I think he made a lot of people aware of how ignorant that was with the Thorpe, his performance today. What he had, three touchdowns, 100 yards, uh, and an interception. And two pass, passes broken up. Should have had another pick, hit him right in the darn chest. I'm not happy about that, but I'm happy with him. But it's, it's, it's phenomenal. I think Shador proved that he should be right beside him. Um, what he had today. 34 for 41, oh my God, 438.5, wow, wow. LeJonte did the doggone thing today. Uh, Will, shoot, uh, our, our receivers are tremendous. Uh, special teams were great. I think Mata kicked his uh, first field goal in, in several weeks. We did not give him an opportunity. I think, was he one away from a record? Yeah, so he, he got his 10th straight with the tie the season. Oh, wow. So it'll be okay if he, he does it in the bowl game, right? Yeah. So that, that count? Yep. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So that's great. Um, opposing team we played, uh, we were <laughs> not afraid, but just understanding that when a team comes here and, uh, you know, they know they're not going to a bowl, they're going to come at us hard until you force them not to go hard anymore. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's what transpired. Um, I adore that coach. He has some phenomenal words of uh, encouragement after the game. Um, he's a pillar of uh, consistency in uh, the Big 12. I only think he's had two losing seasons in his whole career. That's a, that is undarn believable. Uh, I wish I could just touch the hem of his garment, um, biblically speaking. But I'm, uh, I'm proud of where we are and what we accomplished. I really am. So you know, so you want to ask me these crazy questions. I'm not one to go home and watch TV and wish somebody loses so we could go to uh, the bowl game. I don't get down like that. I don't know what I'm going to do today. I may go to Bale or Breckenridge and get on uh, snowmobiles or whatever. I don't know what I'm going to do. There's a lot of time on my hands. Um, so I don't You guys got any of the ideas, let me know. But I'm so we just had a wonderful time with the seniors and just seeing that as well as uh, it didn't hit me to the end of the game that that was the last time here that Misha, Dor and Shiloh and Bucky uh, will enjoy that that moment with the four of us together. Don't forget Junior. He, he is it. He, he is he's the man. He makes it all go. But that was a wonderful moment. I wanted this to get together and take a picture to conclusion of the game, which we did. And thank thank you all that captured it. I appreciate it. Let's go. Uh, Coach, congratulations. Thank Not you. just with your kids, but also you walked out with Jimmy before the game. Yeah. Just the senior class, can you speak on, on the impact that they've had in your relationship with them? They, they're the ones that changed the game for us. They're the ones that impacted this uh, wonderful learning institution. They're the ones that are responsible for the recruits that you're seeing commit. They're the ones that are responsible for the way that game was played today and the way it panned out. They're the ones who put us on the map. They're the ones who have the multitude of these cameramen and women and the wonderful reporters in this room right now. And I just told them that um, to their face. So some of them like Cam, uh, that's been with me since he was a junior in high school. That stuff is tough. Chidozi, you know, just talking with him here and there, BJ played for me when he was seven and eight years old and nine uh, in, in, in Dallas. And I could just keep going on and on and on. I mean, uh, shoot. I don't want to think about it too much because I get emotional, but 
I don't just coach these young men. I love these young men, like they're family. And uh, I just want to, I just want them to soar, not just from the football aspect, but as, as, as young men in life. And that was tough, just seeing them all around the, the stage uh, when I called them up in the locker room right before I came here. That, that's tough. That's tough. Hi, Coach. Nick Edwards, CU Sports Report. On a similar note, when you're- yeah, Can I get the water, Sam, somebody? Yes. When you were standing there bet between Shiloh and Shador, looking out on the- And field, Junior. And Junior, what go. was going through your mind and how powerful was that moment? Um, I didn't, uh, we cool with him, right? We ain't trying to do nothing to him. I'm just like, we've been cool all year, right? Like, yeah, just making sure. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's, that's tough. I didn't really think about it until, you know, you're watching the last seconds tick off the clock. Like, dang, this is it. This is it. Like, that. You know how long this journey's been? Like, with me and my kids, this, that's, it's been a lot of, ups and downs and in and outs and things you guys don't know about that we've overcome. It's been a lot of adverse situations, uh, a lot of highlights, man. It's been unbelievable to think that that's uh, the conclusion of the matter just here. That's tough, that's tough. Amanda Ferguson, Fox 31. What was it like balancing being coach and dad today? Well, I've always been coach and dad, so I don't know no other way. So it's not tough to balance that situation because I don't know any other way. Just this is the first time I seen the finish line. Usually we're distant runners. Only sprinters see the finish line from the start. I'm a distance runner. So I never really see the finish line from the start in the day I saw it. So that's tumultuous. That's that's tremendous. That's heartfelt um, I don't know how they're going to handle it, but Shallow's going to say he's glad that's the last game with me. I know who he is, uh, but the others, others, it's, it's, it's going to be tough. Good, Brian. Hey, Coach Brian Howell, how are you doing? Two questions for you. Uh, you mentioned uh, Oklahoma State. You knew they would be a team that would come after you until yeah. you, you maybe put it on them. You did that very early. Uh, how big was that? Uh, Travis getting that interception right away, then scoring a touchdown, just kind of putting them on the well on the end right there. That's what the plan was last week, to jump on them early, to try to make them understand who we are and who they are. Um, it didn't happen that way. We, we, we made note of that and we focused on that all through the meetings as well as all through practice sessions and, and our pre-game pre speech as well as our um, day before speech. We, we, we made note of all that so that we could have our business early on. Because when we score early and the defense go three and out, it's hard to deal with us. Second question is, you mentioned Bucky. Uh, because of him, mm -hmm. this fan base has uh, gotten to know these players quite a bit because mm -hmm. they've seen them all through the well-off media, all these other things. So they've gotten to know these players. How big of a deal was it for you guys to show up like that for this for this? Oh, uh, tremendous. I mean, first of all, well-off media has set the standard of college football and how college football is covered by um, individuals regarding the team. He set the stage for it. Um, That, it was great, man. I mean, I could, it was great. It was, it was great. It was great. Let's go to the next question. John Treach, Nine News. For the first time in a while, you're allowing yourself to reflect. Yeah. What is most rewarding about this season? Peggy, it's number one. We did what we said we was going to do. Number two is when you win, more of your young men get opportunities to go to the next level. Ain't nobody want no losers. Nobody want them. But when you win, everyone looks the part. And we have several young men in the East-West Shrine game. We're going to probably have several more in the Hula Bowl. And uh, our kids are going to play in our bowl game because that's what we signed up to do, and we're going to finish. We're not going to tap out because that – throws off the structure of next season. It's a couple teams, you, you take note, they, they, they laid an egg in the bowl game and they hadn't recovered since. We don't plan on doing that. We plan on going out there fighting just like we fought today, regardless of where we are. Um, I wish we had say so in the bowl because I wanna go 
somewhere near that our fan base could get there economically because I care about them just that much. I think we have one of the baddest, baddest means best fan bases in the country. I mean, they show up and show out. We've packed the day. Um, they're loud, they're boisterous, they're, they're, they're supportive. And I love them. I absolutely love them because I've seen it go from nothing to something. And I think we had a lot. We, not me, we had a lot to do with it, you all included, by the way you cover us, good or bad. Hi, Coach. How are you doing, on the win, doing, doing well. You haven't got as many touchbacks as you've wanted this season. No, no. Your like, coverage units have been playing with an edge. And they ain't got no problem. They ain't got to. They ain't got to. <laughs> yeah. The ball is coming out. Yeah. We don't been proud we of that, that aspect of your team? We've yeah. handled that. We've handled that. We will have touchbacks next year. I promise you that. I, I told you, you I'm hitting that portal like never before. I already hit it. Yeah. How you doing, Coach? How you doing, sir? Good. Congratulations on the win. Thank you, sir. Uh, you and Elite Company, um, LeBron and his son, mm -hmm. King Griffey Sr., King Virginia, you, Shiloh, Shador. Give me some them. white dudes, too, now. Don't just make it black. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> what about the Mannings, you know? The Mannings? Yeah, yeah. give me the Mannings. Give me the uh, the Watts. Give me some white folks, too, now. Don't just make <laughs> this a black like, thing. Yeah, I mean, by, like, far, like, coaches, coaches players. Yes, sir. Elite Company. I mean, what does it feel like? Because what you're doing is, like, is monumental ground, but well, it's game-changing. I always say I'm a real dad. I'm a real father. I take fathering serious. I don't uh, take fathering lightly because I know what I wanted. I know what I needed. And I know um, the situations my fathers, my stepfather, and my biological father were in. And I know what I wanted as a young man. So I take that very seriously. And every move I've made in life has been based on my kids. So I don't make a move without thinking about them first. It's never about me first because I'm going to make it because I know God got me. But I need to get them and make sure they straight. So that's how I calculated many moves I've made through through life. They thought it was about me. No, it was about my kids. Now they're seeing how it's playing out. Yeah, we got a couple of them. It's probably going to be one or two in the draft, like I said a long time ago, that nobody wanted to believe me. But the way it's looking, it's going to pan out that way. Coach, how are you? Troy Finnegan, CU Sports Report. How are you doing, Troy? Good, how are you? Uh, you walking with Jimmy was such a great moment. I wanted to ask Thank you. you specifically about that. He's been through a lot. You've talked about him kind of like another son. How important was that for, for both of you to share that moment together? Jimmy's like my kid. I love him that much. Um, we talked about some personal things throughout his, his couple of years seasons here. I want to go with him Sunday to see his, his father as well. But he just turned around and asked me. So that's how that transpired. And I said, you, shoot, you know, you don't have to ask me twice. I got you. I got you. And uh, just speaking the pleasantries along the way, it's unbelievable, man. But I love him that much. And I'm sad that he couldn't physically play because he's a dog. So when he's hurt, he's hurt, hurt. Because he would have tried everything and given everything to play. And we would have got him the ball. But, uh, that's tremendous, and I'm, I'm I'm proud that I can assist that young man in any endeavor from here on out for the rest of his life. Coach Ron Skulls from Ralph Report. This is the first time that a Colorado team has shut a team out since 2021. What does it mean for a senior-led defense like this to come out and have that kind of performance on senior day? It means a lot. It means a lot, especially rebounding from getting our bus kicked last week. It, it means a lot that they understand that they know how to flush stuff in life. They know how to rebound. They know how to just put it behind them and keep on going and look straight ahead. And I'm, I'm proud of them for that aspect of, of things. Uh, Rob called a tremendous game. He called a tremendous game last week, but this week we responded. We did the things that were called and we executed uh, on a high, high, uh, high note on, on every aspect of the game. The way they were getting after it, the way we got after it, we kind of changed philosophies of getting to the ball all week in practice, and it worked. It paid off. Hey, Coach Adam Rinker with ESPN. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, the Heisman historically has gone to quarterbacks, often on national championship contenders. What is it about Travis that has put himself in this position, like you said, to clinch the Heisman? You, you've never he seen it before. He's uh, the best player in college football, you could find ways to hate, to criticize, to condemn him, and you won't be, you won't come out of that looking, looking professional. 
because now you're just searching for something like the idiots was talking about in the Thorpe that I guess he didn't have the tackles. Well, if a cornerback has a lot of tackles, that means they caught a lot of balls. That's just stupid. But Travis Hunter proved today, and he's proved every week, that he is the best player in college football. So you got to give me another definition of the award. What's the definition of the award? The award is to go to who? The best quarterback? I don't know how you could be voted uh, in every category at some sort. I think he's up for best offensive player, uh, defensive player, uh, uh, receiver. What He's up for a plethora of things, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, who else has done that? Ever. Ever. So I, I don't waste my time talking about other athletes that are, uh, that's up for the award as well. That's not fair to them for me to voice my, my bold opinion on who should win the award and downgrade them. I ain't got to downgrade them. Travis is him, man. Travis is that dude. Ain't nobody could deal with him on either side of the ball. If we put him in punt return, he would be that dude as well, a kick return as well. He, he's that guy, and uh, his draft status is going to tell everyone who he is. Should, shouldn't that tell you who he is? He's probably going to be first or, or second pick out of the whole draft. That should tell you how dominant and prominent he is. Coach uh, Daniel Allen, Ocali, uh, Colorado hasn't been in a position like it had, like it is right now since 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, are moments like this what you envisioned when you took this job? No. I wanted to win out. We want to be undefeated. That's the moment. Time. Okay, guys. We're going to end right there with him wanting to be undefeated. Thanks again. Let's get the likes up to 10. Let's get the subscribers up to 10. Let's get the comments up to 10. Thanks again for watching the whole video. With that said, I'm done breaking bread.